this is Trinisha Cottrell, and I'm going to try to talk really quickly. So <laughs> this video is going to be called Profound Gratitude. And I know it's a weird title and everything else. And some people are like, OK, you're talking about profound gratitude. Why? Like, what is the reason for this title? <laughs> Let me tell you. Earlier today, I had spent some time going over some business stuff and then I had a me date. And if I remember, I'll pop the picture here or here. And I, I think I'm going to start doing stuff like that, especially when it comes to self-care, especially when it comes to loving yourself, especially when it comes to spending time to pour into yourself so that you can help other people. I really want to be intentional about showing people like they can see like an example of what that looks like in my life. And then whatever makes you happy, whatever you do that pours into you, you can do that on your time where you are spending time pouring into yourself. And so I'm doing this because I just ate not that long ago and I'm a little bit bloated because of other things. And so <laughs> so I, I don't I mean, if you judge me, you judge me. It doesn't matter. But I feel more comfortable like this. So this is how it's going to be. <laughs> and so as I went on my me day earlier today, I was reading this book. I can't say the title because it has a curse word in it, but it is called You Are a Bad, you know, whatever the other word is. And it's not it's it's the word that comes. It's the the letter. The first letter of the alphabet is what it starts with. And so and it, I can't remember who the author is, but if I remember, I will put it in the description. And so <laughs> I'm really going to have to this is going to be one of those videos where I'm going to have to pay attention and like go select all of this stuff so I can make sure I insert it in. Because most of the time I'll say, if I remember, I'll put it in. And then sometimes I don't remember and I don't put it. And I'll try to put the affiliate links too for the UV thing that's in the video, my book. And then if if this chair is on there, I'm not sure where my mom got this from, but I want to make sure that people can get it if they they want it, you know. And then, of course, you know, anything else that I talk about in here, like the book, that book will probably be on Amazon more than likely. So that link will probably be in here, you know. And <laughs> so I was planning on doing my nails tonight. So I think I'm going to do that because my hair is pretty much done. And I don't know if it's going to look like this tomorrow. It might look a mess and I might have to just redo it just because that's just how it works. And so I ended up not having class tonight. So I did my me date today and I was going to go to my class afterwards. And, you know, it's going to be a whole vibe. But as I was pouring into myself after as I was reading this book called You Are a you know, bad, whatever, <laughs> bad, you know, with the, the other, uh, other letter, the A, you know, the first letter of the alph alphabet, then in, in there, I was reading parts of the book and it was starting to talk about speaking life into yourself. It started talking about, I am affirmations. And, you know, of course I am, is like calling on God because God is the great I am. And so every time I say I am, I'm saying in Jesus name, in other words, you know, but God. And so, <laughs> and so I, um, every time I'm doing that, I'm, I'm making sure I'm intentional about it. I'm making sure that everything I'm doing is with, m with me being the best that I could possibly be. You know, like if I'm saying I am worthy, I want to make sure that I'm intentionally doing things that are are you know making me worthy in God's eyes like I know God has already created me worthy but I want to make sure I'm I am an ambassador of the kingdom that I'm acting like a Christ-like that I'm acting like a woman of God you know and do I do things perfect absolutely not <laughs> like I say I mess up every day because I feel like everything that I mess up on is intended for me to learn from it so that I can have a failure so that I can have success in the future so everything is adding up to something else everything is used for something in the future. Every day is building up off of itself so they can build for towards your future. So it can build you up for whatever is coming next in your life. And so I said I was going to do my nails. I should probably start because if not, I'm going to be still on here. Sorry if it's loud. I know I got to file my nails. I already pushed my cuticles and stuff like that. Pushed, <laughs> pushed my cuticles and stuff like that. So I'm good there. But I just want to make sure that I am being intentional with doing my nails and stuff because I have not did my nails in like this week <laughs> because it just got a lot and I was I was so tempted today on my me date to get my nails done you don't even understand I was like I can just really just get my nails done because then I don't have to worry about doing my nails for at least three weeks you know 
they grow really fast though so my nails would grow out in a week and I'd probably be you know talking about that but I would be grateful still <laughs> y'all like really it's so loud I'm sorry I just really want to make sure that it's good. I don't want to be like spending a lot of time doing nothing. I want to make sure I'm being intentional. Okay. And I'm not saying that this video is nothing. I'm just saying I'm making sure that I'm doing something. And so as I was thinking about speaking life into myself and I was reading this book, it was talking about ways to speak life into yourself. It was talking about ways to just be better in life. And one of the things that it said, one of the very first things it said was gratitude. You know, being appreciative of the things that you have, making sure that you are, you have a list of the things that you're grateful for. Like if you can wake up in the morning, you're grateful for waking up in the morning. You know, this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, you're not just like, oh, it's just another day. You're like, this is another day, you know? And so when I was thinking about speaking life into myself, all day long, I have been speaking life into myself. I have been pouring into myself because, you know, I had my me date. So on my me date, I went to my favorite restaurant. I got, you know, these stuffed mushrooms and, oof, so good. I forgot how good it was. And it, I'm day two after the fast. So like <laughs> in the first day after the fast, I just had tea. I think tea was the thing that I did because, you know, you can only drink water or, or water with different stuff in it. You can't drink anything caffeinated. So I made these things called turmeric lattes when I was on the Daniel Fest and it was so good. It was really good. I probably will still do that to this day because like it had the vanilla in it. Like I did vanilla um, extract and then I did almond milk because you can't do regular milk. And then I did a little <laughs> see, I shouldn't be giving away the secret, but in the original recipe, you can like, I don't, I don't, I don't care enough to where I would think that I would make it so that no one else can make it. So I'm okay sharing the recipe, you know? <laughs> so I did that. I put a little bit of cinnamon in it. That's like my little secret is cinnamon. And a lot of people would just put turmeric and they'll, they'll put the almond milk and they'll put the, uh, the almond milk the turmeric and they'll put dates in it because you can't use sweetener or sugar or anything like that it has to be like a natural fruit or something that's natural it can't be anything else and so I use dates to sweeten a lot of like a, my turmeric lattes and it actually really does taste like a latte that's how cool it is like it's no caffeine in it but it it really does taste like a latte so the first time I drank it I was like mm, this is good but it's missing a little something and so I decided I was gonna put because <laughs> you know we always got to whip it up we got to add extra stuff we can't just go with the right like I got everything in my well I eat healthy but I got to taste all the flavors I can't have flavorless food I just can't do it I can't get with it like I didn't lose weight because I tasted a whole bunch of stuff that had no flavor I lost weight because I'm a foodie I like to eat and I pick stuff that I could eat a lot of but it wasn't a lot of calories so like I might eat a whole bag of carrots or you know, back in the day, my grandma used to make these to this um, tomato cucumber thing with sugar in it. And it would have uh, vinegar and salt and pepper and stuff like that. And it was really good. So I made like a healthy version of that. <laughs> I did like a sweetener, like one pack or half a pack of sweetener. And I, uh, I did vinegar. So apple cider vinegar, because that gives its own flavor, even though it's not like something that's going to bloat you up or anything like that. Apple cider vinegar with the mother in it is actually really good for you. It's good for digest your digestive tract. It's good for releasing a lot of toxins out of your body and everything. So I would do that. And then I would put, I wouldn't put pepper or salt on it. I just did that. So I kept it real simple, but it's delicious. Like it tastes just like my grandma's, but it's not really bad for you. you know? <laughs> Sorry, grandma. But yeah, so I did that. But so this turmeric latte, it's, it called for turmeric, um, almond milk, and dates. And I was like, mm, it's good, but, you know, I got to add a little extra to it. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, let me do a dash of cinnamon, right? So first I put a, a dash of cinnamon. And the dates, I just cut it up in like big cubes because I was like, oh, this is fine. It'll be fine. And 
But the first time I tasted it, it wasn't sweet. And I was like, hmm, you know, like if I'm going to drink it, I'm going to have to really drink it. So I can't just pretend like this is good enough. So what I did was I, I tore the dates or I cut up the dates into really tiny pieces. And I let that sit, like I put a little bit of milk in there and I let it sit in there. And as it was coming to a simmer, I stirred it. So that way all of the flavor, all the sweetness from the dates was in the milk. I added uh, like a little dash or you could say like a little squeeze, whatever you have for your vanilla extract. I put like about a, a teaspoon or a tablespoon, depending on what your taste is. I put that in there, stirred it up. Then I added a little dash of cinnamon. I was like, okay, we're going to make this a little good. And it was good, but I was like, hmm, there's something else that I want. I said, I kind of want some kind of chocolate. So I used cacao. And at first I was like, hmm, I don't know. I put too much cacao the first time. And I was like, it's a little too chocolatey. Like, I love chocolate, but I want this to still be a latte. So I ended up putting like a dash of cacao like just a half a, a teaspoon of cacao was perfect because I could taste chocolate but it wasn't overpowering and it became like this chocolate turmeric latte that just whew, that thing mm, I did my thing on that Some, like I said you got to give yourself a pat on the back because if ain't nobody else gonna do it you need to be telling yourself that you got it like that. You need to be telling yourself that you're beautiful. You need to be telling yourself that you're you're beautifully and wonderfully made. You need to be telling yourself that you got this. You need to be speaking life into yourself every single day because every time you wake up, somebody's going to try to stop you. And if you are trying to be like me and you want to change the world or if you want God to be able to use you, you can't allow the adversary, not even a foothold in your life to tell you what you're not because you should know who you are. Every time I do something good, I'm not shy about congratulating myself on accomplishing things now because I love myself and because I want to make sure that I am encouraging myself as much as I would want somebody else to encourage me. Like sometimes or in the past before, like I was working on myself and everything, I would want like my boyfriend or who I was with, I would want them to be the ones that was speaking life into me. And I still appreciate when they say nice things to me, like if I'm with someone or something like that and they're giving me words of affirmation. I still love stuff like that, but I'm not expecting or needing it. Like them doing that is just the added bonus, you know, on my life now. But instead of me like looking for them to do it, I look for myself to do it. And that's like one of those things I like I always talk about in the videos when I say, instead of like saying, I'm going to wait to go to Paris when I have a man because it's the city of love. You could still love yourself and go to the city of love. You don't have to wait for somebody else to start living your life because God forbid you pass away tomorrow and you could have went on a trip today. Like Paris is one of the places that I want to visit. And when I get a chance to go, I'm going to go with or without somebody. I'm not waiting for somebody to start living my life. God didn't make me so that I could just be waiting around for some man to to start doing the things that he put on my my heart for me to do for the things that he purposed me for. He wants me to start doing that now. I have everything that I need in God. When a man comes along, that will just be an added bonus. It'll be beneficial to the kingdom of God because we'll be in covenant. It'll be something that, you know, we will give all honor and glory to God. You know, I'm hoping and praying that it's like that and that we both are seeking God first before we make decisions in our life and we're not just all about ourselves you know that's what my hope is and I'm saying it like that because I'm not with nobody but <laughs> I said it all in proper English and everything I'm not with nobody <laughs> but as of right now I'm not with anyone and so I want to make sure that I'm not waiting on someone to start living my life because I don't know how much time God is going to grace me with I don't know if God's going to be like, OK, well, you know, depending on what you do with your purpose, depending on what you're doing in your life, if you just want to sit here and then just be miserable because you're waiting for somebody else, then I might as well, you know, this might might as well be your last day. I'm going to be like, no, you can't ask for another second minute or hour for your day. So we spend it worrying for no reason, for no reason. Like <laughs> we spend it waiting around for somebody for no reason. Like you're waiting. You're going to wait regardless. You know that, right? Like, that's what uh, the epiphany that I had the other day. I was sitting there and you know how I'm like content being single, but I also now want to be in a relationship. And so when God put on my heart at first, I was like, God, you know, I really like being single. I'm focused when I'm single. I do all the things I want to do. And God said, you have 
a godly relationship confused with an unhealthy one. And he said that when you're thinking about being with somebody, it's not for you or for the other person. It's for glory, for giving all honor and glory to the kingdom. And when you're thinking about somebody stopping you from your purpose, that's not somebody that I would intend for you to be with in the first place. The person who I have grace for you wants you to be in your purpose because they're going to want to see you in, because they're going to care about you. They're going to care about benefiting the kingdom of God. It's not just going to be all about them. It's not just going to be all about you. It's going to be all about God. And then you guys will pour into each other because you have you have a guideline, you know, which is the Bible, which is God. So if you're staying focused on me, you will be fine. And the person will pour into you and you will pour into them. It's not just going to be like they just constantly take from you and then they never give you anything in return. And I was like, you're right, God. You know, so he really checked me on a lot of things because I was feeling like it was going to be like a prison. <laughs> no, that sounds so crazy, but I've, I've never been with someone in a healthy relationship. So I don't really know what that looks like. So it wasn't like I was trying to be funny. And like for people who heard me say that in the past, I really don't mean it like I was trying to be like cynical or anything like that. I just don't have an idea of what that looks like. So for me, it's just like, OK, you know, I don't like when I think of a relationship, I can't see what a healthy relationship looks like in my mind because I've never been in one. So when people are talking about relationships, for me, I used to be like, like I, I immediately started feeling like run, run as fast as you can. <laughs> and then like once I had a conversation with God and God kind of broke it down for me, I was like, you know, you're right. Because I mean, God wouldn't want me to be with somebody who was controlling my life anyways, because God is the one who controls everything. So why would he want somebody to take his place? That doesn't even make any sense, you know. And so I started like feeling like, OK, if someone is like actually not trying to hurt me they actually care about my well-being I can kind of see that if someone is actually like trying to do something that benefits God if they're treating me like Christ treat treated the church I mean like Christ loved the church then of course I would want something like that I, nobody wants to be in a relationship where they feel unappreciated unwanted unworthy like 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 nothing you know people want to feel safe and seen they don't want to just feel like they're with somebody. Just to, I don't want to just be with somebody just to be with somebody because if that was the case, I could be with anybody, you know? And I don't mean any person in the world. I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying, like, I could settle for something less than what God has for me if that's what I, I truly desire was just to be with someone, you know? But I only want to be with the person who God set aside for me, who God appointed to be a part of my life. I don't want to just have somebody in a position that God has for somebody else. I can't just be giving somebody a position that they they never the it was never destined for them. They were never graced for it. You know, they they in a whole nother position that they never were. God never trained them for that position. You know, they just got there just because I wanted them. I want them to be in that position. I need them to be in that position because that's what I need in my life, because that's what will benefit the kingdom of God. Not because it's what I selfishly want. Not because, you know, they look gorgeous. Nothing like that. It's got to be because it benefits God, you know. And so <laughs> I know I say that and it's, it's a good talk game because, you know, while I'm on this video and I don't see somebody standing in front of me while my flesh isn't weak, while I'm not, you know, going through any of the trials or tribulations or whatever else, it's easy to say it in a video. It's hard to be about it. You know, it's hard to be about that God life in real life. It's hard to be out in the world and not of the world sometimes. And I can say that, honestly, I feel like people pretend like it's so easy, like, oh, yeah, I'll just do all the right things. It's so easy. I just I have no problem ever making a good decision. Oh, this is so easy. And it's like it's not easy because you're going to be tempted because Satan's not just going to send you something you don't want and then be like, oh, here's <laughs> here's a burnt French fry. That's been sitting out in the sun that was on top of the garbage. Do you want this? <laughs> like Nobody's like, mm, delicious. <laughs> You're kind of like, no, I don't want that. He's going to give you, imagine your favorite food. Let's say, <laughs> let's say your favorite food is rolls, homemade rolls that your, that one family member makes this you know, they got it like that. Like they, they like that, like that in the kitchen. <laughs> they, they got, they have this like 
specific set of skills that's unique to to hit every single taste bud. You know what I'm saying? And so, <laughs> so they make these homemade biscuits, right? And I mean, they're, they're self rise. They they're rising. They're in the oven. You know, the person goes and they they create this like un unsalted butter or whatever type of butter it is that they get, and they they paste it all over the top. They they just pour or they they paint on. I don't know what it's called. The the correct terminology is, but you know, they take the little thing that's like a little tiny paintbrush and they just put the butter on top of the biscuits. And as it is baking in the oven, it gets to this perfect golden brown. I mean, the the rolls melt in your mouth. They're so, oof, woo, it's so good, right? <laughs> That's what Satan's going to tempt you with. He's not going to tempt you with that burnt, crispy, crispity, crackety, <laughs> nasty, flies all over it fry on top of the trash can he's not gonna give you that he's gonna give you that roll that that just came out the oven that's smelling up the entire kitchen it's permeating the whole house that's what satan is gonna tempt you with so that's why i say my hope is to do the right thing because i know that every time you know satan's gonna always try to send some kind of distraction that's looking like it's looking and it's not going to be an easy like oh no i don't want this this really attractive guy who seems like they're saying all the right things, even though God's saying no. <laughs> oh yeah, he he looks he looks like what? <laughs> God took his time. <laughs> oh no, no, I absolutely don't want that. <laughs> like like the flesh, you're gonna have to really be like, look, I don't know what I'm gonna have to do. Like what I do in situations like that, you're gonna laugh at me, but this is what I really do. I'll be like, God, please remove anything from my life <laughs> that I'm too weak to remove on my own because, you know, the flesh is weak. I like I pray like that and I'll be real with God because I'm like, I really I don't want to be with somebody who you don't want me to be with. And even though they they can I mean, they're a wordsmith. They talking like mm, they're like a connoisseur of words. They just. They their their talk game is like everything. You know what I'm saying? I don't mean everything like God. I mean like if they used it for good instead of evil, <laughs> they would be something else. They might be like the best author or the best speaker in the entire world. But because they want to use it for the wrong thing, you know, they just they just using it just to manipulate people, you know? But yeah. Like it would be one of those people cuz I you know, words of affirmation is my thing. So it's obviously most of the time somebody who's, you know, attractive, who just got this amazing talk game. And it's just like, why can't I just not like that? <laughs> I'm just being real. And so I'll ask God to remove that person from my life because I'll be like, God, I'm just not strong enough to do it on my own. I just, I'm just being real because sometimes that's what you got to do. If you know that something's not good for you and you're struggling, call on God. Don't be trying to fight the battle on your own and act like you got to handle it all by yourself. God is with you always. He's always there because he's he's got you. He's got your back. He knows that the flesh is weak. He knows that you're a human. You're not God. You're not going to do everything perfect. You're going to make the wrong decisions. And if you are asking him for help, you are reaching out to him, then he has no problem helping you. He will always give you a way out. Whenever you say, God, I need you, whenever whenever you're going through like a tough time or you're in a situation where you just don't want to be there for whatever reason, and you call on God, he will make sure that you have a way to escape. He will make sure that you don't have to end up falling into sin or being, you know, in gluttony or whatever else. He will make sure that you have you have a way to stop or to get away from whatever it is or whatever else. So when I'm in a, a moment of weakness, when I'm, you know, I'm tempted by food or whatever else it is, I always ask God, like, God, I'm too weak. <laughs> I am too weak in this moment to be able to make a good decision. And I know I want this thing, but if this is not what you want, give me a way to escape it. Get like, I need you 
to make it so that the person just never talks to me again because I'm not going to be strong enough to not answer the phone. I'm not going to be strong enough to not text back. I'm not going to be strong enough to not go, you know, hang out with this person like at, I don't know, at whatever restaurant or something, you know, like I just, I won't be strong enough to do that because I'm interested in this person. And, but you're, if you're saying that this person is not for me, this is not of God, this is a distraction. I need this person to go ghost today. Like I don't ever want to hear from this person ever again. I might like the person, but I don't like them enough to go against you, God, you know, (laughs) like they might, they might be nice, but if it's not for me, remove it do what you got to do. Like, (laughs) I might be a little upset. I might be a little sad, but imagine a heartbreak in the long run. Like, if I'm feeling like I'm feeling today, like, obviously, I'm gonna need you to step in because (laughs) I just don't got it. I don't like, I don't always have it. I'm not always on. But the reason why I have so much contentment and peace in my life is because Whenever I pray to God like that, it's like the person falls off the face of the earth. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus, because, you know, (laughs) you know, like sometimes it's just hard. Most of the time I do really good. Like I can just I discern and just move on about my business. But every once in a while, Satan will send a, a really good one along. You know, he will send somebody or something that will be real tempting. The job will have a whole bunch of zeros or something. This is just an example of not reality, but the job may have a whole bunch of zeros and benefits looking like they looking. I mean, everything is looking good. You just like, whoo. And God's like, you can't take that job. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Jesus, like, I'm going to need you. Like, I don't know what you got to do. Like, let the let the job fall through. It's not available for another month. I don't know what you got to do, but just remove it because I don't know. If I'm strong enough to turn down them zeros, you know, <laughs> like, like, and I'm just being real because some people pretend like, oh yeah, God told me not to do it. And I just immediately knew this was the right decision. And I had no trouble walking away from that person or that job or that house or that thing or giving up money or whatever else. No, I struggle just like everybody else, but I also call on God and that's what helps me. That's the difference between me and some other people. It's not that... I'm better than somebody else. It's not, it's not that God has me on another, you know, he, he thinks more of me than someone else. It's just that I call on God when I'm in a moment of weakness, when I'm going through things in my life, when I'm hurting, when I'm, I'm sad, when I'm happy, when, when things are happening in my life, I turn to God first over everything else, because I know that nobody can help me like God can. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. It's true. It's a song and it's true. Like <laughs> real talk. I could call somebody and they can give me like their the best advice that they have, but I'm going to still be feeling like I'm feeling. But when I call on God and I say, God, I'm struggling, I'm hurting, I'm, I'm sad right now. You know, this person really broke my heart when, when I'm disappointed, when I'm angry, when I don't know how I'm going to get over this heartbreak or something's happening in my life, I call on God and I'm like, you know, people could say, oh, you'll find someone else. Oh, it, this will happen. Oh, that will happen. And it's nice for people to say things like that. But it's something different when God can help you heal. It's something different when God steps in. and He he takes that piece of you that makes you feel like you're missing something. He lets you know that he's got you. When he lets you know that everything is going to be OK. When he lets you know that his plans are to prosper you and that, to never harm you. When he knows he tells you no weapon that that's formed against you can never harm you. When he says that everything is not happening. For the good of those that that love me and are called a call a called according according to his purpose when he says that you know you are the head and not the tail that you are above only and not beneath he's not saying that because you know someone says they do or don't want you is all of a sudden going to make you unworthy no you are still the head and not the tail you are still above only and not beneath you are still more than a conqueror because after everything you've been through you can go through everything and god got your back you know like You don't have to worry about trying to front and be something that you're not because God is your everything. You are everything that God already created you to be. The only thing you have to do is be the best version of yourself, to be intentional with your life, to make sure that you are disciplined and make sure that you're serving. That's it. That's what God wants from each of us. He's not expecting you to be like me or me to be like you. He's not expecting me to be with somebody that you're supposed to be with or me to be with somebody you're supposed to be with. He's not expecting me to to go battle it out with some other woman over some man who don't even want either one of us. Like, And I say it like that because 
sometimes we really make it seem like, oh, if the guy chooses us, that makes us worthy. You're worthy because God said you're worthy. You're not worthy because somebody else is telling you who they think you are. Their opinion doesn't matter that much. They are they were created by God, too. You know, y'all are all on the same level. Everything that is for you is for you. And any person that loves you is never going to put you in a situation where they want you to have to battle it out for them because they are going to care about your well-being. They want you to be the best that you could be. And you being insecure is not you being the best version of you. That's you lowering yourself. That's you becoming something that you're not. I remember a long time ago when I was insecure and I used to feel like, you know, it just, it made me into a whole different person. I was really second guessing everything. I always looked down at the ground all the time. I never, I never wanted to go for anything. I kind of just, I kind of just was, I was alive, but I wasn't living my life, you know, and being with that person made me the worst version of myself and it wasn't just their fault I'm not just saying oh because I was with them I stayed with them so because I stayed with them and I was in a toxic situation and you know I was insecure and jealous and all of the other bad negative you know characteristic traits that just make you into somebody that you're not all of that changed me it changed me into somebody God didn't even create me to be I was walking around miserable I was looking angry I was looking sad I just felt I just felt sad all the time you know I never believed in myself I never you know wanted to go for anything I never like and God got on me the other day about this it's so funny because you know you think you get rid of some stuff and God's like this is still there we need to get rid of this and and I was like God was like you're gonna have to start fighting for the things that you want and I was like but I'm doing stuff he's like I'm not talking about you just doing a couple actions here and there I'm talking about if you want something you have to go for it and I'm like but if I'm going for something you know in my mind I'm like okay I'm going for something that I want but what if it's somebody else is a God like God's like everything that's for you is for you I'm not telling you to battle it out against somebody else because what's for you is for you if you're supposed to have that job and it's 20 qualified applicants and yours is in there and you're unqualified you're still gonna get the position position but you have to go for it You can't just be like, I'm not going to submit an application because I'll never get it. You're going to have to fight for it. You're going to have to put your, your, you're going to have to put your foot in the race. Like you're going to have to do something so that you could be about some kind of action about intentionality, because I don't know you want it unless you say you want it. You know, if you're saying that you want to be in a relationship, unless you start acting like you want to be in a relationship. I'm not giving you a relationship so that you can break my child's heart. You know, God's like, I'm not about to send some guy to you so that you could just destroy his, you know, whatever it is he has going on, because I have to protect him just like I have to protect you. And if you're not being intentional about being consistent, if you're not intentionally ready to be in a relationship, if you're not intentional about, you know, just trying to be a good communicator and not just not saying anything. If you're not intentional about just being the best version of yourself and being all the things that you want somebody else to be, I can't bring somebody in your life to have them be that for you and you not reciprocate that because you say you want reciprocity, but you're not willing to do it yourself. And I'm like, whew, when God be talking to me, like he be talking to me, I'm like, I really need to hear it that way. <laughs> like, I know y'all probably were helping were thinking that I was gonna say oh no God like why you gotta come at me like that no I need to hear it like that because I actually heard it you know I didn't just I was listening and I heard everything that God said it wasn't just like it went in one ear and out the other it wasn't just like I I slightly heard a little bit of it it was like no I was intentionally listening I was I was opening my ear gates to everything it was that God had had to tell me and I was taking it to heart and I was really I was really intentionally listening, taking, I was heeding his word. And God's absolutely right. Everything that I'm asking for in my life, I have to really want it. I have to go for it. I can't just pretend like I don't want something because why would God give it to me if if I don't want it? If I'm not saying that I really want that thing. If I'm pretending like it's not important to me, how would God know that that's even an option? How would God even know or give me that option if I'm saying I don't want it? If I'm taking myself out of the race already, 
And I'm not saying I'm going against some other woman for some man. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying like, if I want a job, I'm going to have to apply for it. If I want to be in a relationship with somebody and God has a person that's for me, I'm going to have to really intentionally be about being in a relationship. I can't just say, oh God, I want to be in a relationship, but I want to be single because I want to go on vacations by myself for a little bit before I do a vacation because I want to, you know, do my me dates. I can still do a me date in a relationship because I want to feel independent because I don't want to lose focus. And God's saying, you're not going to lose focus if it's with the right person, if you stay focused on me. Don't worry about what the other person wants. Don't worry about trying to be something for somebody else. Just be yourself and focus on me and I'll take care of the rest. And sometimes we forget that God can do that. We forget that he is about that life. He's about that God life because he is God. (laughs) We forget that everything that we're going through, everything that we're doing is for a reason. It's contingent upon something else that is going to push us and and it's going to head us in the right direction. It's going to push us into our purpose. (laughs) You know, it's going to be the thing that, that allows us to grow in areas of our life where we really need to be better where we need to really move move up and whatever it is that we're we're going through in life like if I had an area in my life where I was insecure I need to move out of that level to security and I'm secure because I know everything that God promised me is true I know God is a God that he cannot lie I know that he did not bring me this far to lead me that I didn't go through everything in my life so that he could bring me backwards here's the end result you can barely see it I feel like, okay, you can kind of see it back here. It's like a light pink color. You can't even tell this on there. You can kind of tell a little bit. I feel like you can't see the color. Okay, you can see it here a little bit because it's white. You can see it here a little bit because it's green. There it goes. So it's like a light pink color. And it's like, it's giving like grown woman vibes for some reason. <laughs> like, okay, I'm, I'm on my grown stuff now. But yeah, sorry, I've been doing my nails on these videos, but I really don't have any other time that I could do it. And I think I did like a little sort of exercise earlier, but I didn't really exercise, exercise. And I kind of am not feeling great about doing it that way. I really like being in- intentional about the exercising that I'm doing. And so I try to make sure that I'm I'm really being about that exercise life. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, I want to make sure that I do all the things that I need to do. And so in conclusion, when it comes to being grateful in your life, make sure that you are showing gratitude to God. And I would suggest first thing in the morning so that you don't allow Satan or anything else to come in and try to take you off your game and make you feel like you shouldn't appreciate the things that God's already given you. And it's really hard to be ungrateful when you're being appreciative. It really is. And if you haven't had a chance, definitely pick up that book. You are a bad, you know, the A word, (laughs) because although it has a curse word in it, just like the subtle art of not giving a, you know, that book is actually amazing. I really loved that book. Should I say loved? I could say loved, but I don't mean it in the God way. I mean, like the book is, is really like that. And so when I'm reading this book, it's like it's an easy read. It's not something that you have to do. It's not a lot, you know, it's I think it's 200 and some pages, but it's it's like short pages, you know, in each in each chapter is like like a couple pages or something like that. So it makes it easier, you know, to go through easier to read. And it's got like these little quotes in there that say, you know, just do it or I am beautiful or whatever. So it's like little motivational things at the end of everyone, which I really love. And so. All day today, I've been speaking life into myself. I've been doing my meat date, pouring into myself. I've been working. You know, I did a little business stuff and I wish I had brought my hat in here, but I didn't. If I if I remember, I'll show you this picture, which you probably are barely going to be able to see because it won't show up like that. But. This is my hat. And you can barely see it like I thought, but. Can you see that? But yes, this is my hat that I just did. And so I did like a little. I did like a little video on it, but you're not going to be able to see it because you can't see it on here. But.
So that's just like one of the things. I try to do a, sorry. Okay, I don't know if I have another picture in my head. I do, it's right there. That's one by itself. But yeah, it came out really good and they didn't take long doing it either. But that's like my new thing. But yes, so I I did that hat because, not because I wanted to be working on business while I was doing my me day, but it was just something that I could like, I could drop off like exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to look a certain way, be a certain way. And then I wanted to make sure that it was something that was, that I really liked, you know? And so I did that when I was working with this person who was working on their business as well. And so we kind of like not collaborating, but definitely, you know, looking at different ventures and ways to like grow our businesses and stuff like that. And so that was good. And then I went and I did my me date stuff. I, I was going to get my nails done. I, it was so hard to not go get my nails done because this, I don't want to say the struggle is real, but I'm so blessed that I bought this kit to do my gel nails at home and everything else. And this has been such a blessing to just get them done. And then they look all polished. They look nice, neat and organized. I mean, they look really good. I wish you could see the color, but I feel like It's kind of like a nude, but it's a light pink color. It's kind of like, it's the color of this. It's like that color pink. So it's really hard to see it, but it looks like, you know, I got my nails like they're just perfectly manicured or something else. I don't know, but, <laughs> but I like the kit. It's just doing my nails every three days or every week is so time consuming because that 20 minutes I could be exercising for 20 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, I could be doing this video. I could be posting, I could be working on more business stuff, but instead I'm doing my nails, which I'm grateful that I have this kit. I'm not complaining at all. I just, I'm trying to figure out if it's worth it. You know, if the time me spending $20, 20, $20, 20 hours, every 20 hours, really, Okay, I'm starting to get a little tired. Me spending 20 minutes every day or every three days doing my nails is worth it. Or if I should just be going to get my nails done every three weeks and then not have to worry about it for three weeks. Like, I know time-wise, it'll be more beneficial for me to go to the salon. But when it comes to spending money, it's cheaper to do it at home. So I'm just like, you know, time is one of the most expensive things that you have, even though you're probably saying, oh, but you're saving such and such money. But listen, time is something I can never get back. I can't get that back. So I'm I'm really weighing if if it's worth it or not. I made it to month three. So I did make it <laughs> to, to two to three months doing my nails at home. I think month three will be over in another two or three weeks or something like that. But you get what I'm saying. It's been about a little over two months that I've been doing my nails at home. And yes, it's been going okay. Some days I'm just like, I don't feel like doing my nails again. Three days later, like I'm just gonna take the polish off of all of them and just let it go. But <clears throat> let me just finish this out because I didn't know it was gonna be this long. I planned on like working out because like I said, I wanna be intentional with my work and workouts. I I put my band on and I did a bunch of stuff about the around the house. And I did like a few things like while I was, cleaning out the tub and all of the other stuff. So I put that in with my workout, but I don't feel like it's a real workout because I didn't do a bunch of crunches. I didn't do, you know, cycling. I didn't walk. I didn't do anything, you know, and usually I would go swimming. So that would be part of my exercise. I was swimming. I would go skating for <clears throat> a couple hours. And so skating, I would work my leg muscles and stuff like that. And then swimming, I would do 30 minutes of, of uh, swimming, which is good for your entire body. And so Today, I didn't do either one of those things. I just cleaned the house and and I, you know, walked around vacuuming and, you know, wiped down counters and did the tub and the bathroom. And I did not do laundry today, so I probably have to do that tomorrow. We'll see. But I I feel like I wasn't intentionally like doing anything with my exercises. So I definitely want to exercise tonight when I get off of this video. I'm going to probably do I'm probably going to bike for like 20 minutes. I'm not going to do a long one. I'm just going to do something quick just so that I can get my my lungs going and my my body, you know, will start doing stuff. And then afterwards, I'm probably going to do a quick snack and then I'm going to go to bed uh, probably an hour or so later. So 
definitely got to hop off here, but I really wanted to be intentional. Although this is like my me day, this helps me too when I'm pouring into somebody else. When I serve someone else, it really helps me feel like, you know, I'm, I'm being intentional with my life. It helps me feel like if it, it fills me up, you know, when I'm helping other people. And so, you know, I didn't want this to be like a me and, and someone else's day, but this does help me too. And I had to pour into myself first so that I could do this because it's not just something that I just do just because I want to be, you know, just working or whatever else. And I don't really consider this work. I consider this part of my purpose, you know? So it, whenever I'm in my purpose, it doesn't feel like work. It feels like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, you know? So I hope that every day you wake up and you thank God, you're telling him how grateful you are for everything that you you are showing profound gratitude towards the life that you've been given and that you don't compare anything that you have to anybody else. Because like Teddy Roosevelt said, comparison is a thief of joy. You cannot live your life comparing it to someone else's because you will always consider what they have as more than yours. And it will distract you from staying focused on the path that God has for you. So always appreciate everything you have in life, whether you're in a relationship or not, whether you have a job or not, whether you, whatever it is that you're doing, whatever God's blessed you with or whatever he's removed. I, I thank God for the things he's removed because sometimes I'm not strong enough to remove them on my own. And every time he removes something, it's allowing something that's supposed to be there to be in its place. Every, every, every guy, <clears throat> every job, every whatever it is that he takes from my life, it's another opportunity for the right thing to be there. So I'm just so eternally grateful to God just for the breath in my body, just for just him being God and doing the things for my benefit, because he didn't have to give me another opportunity, but he did. He didn't have to give you another opportunity, but he did. So what are you going to do with the opportunities God's giving you?